Imagine majoring in math at an Ivy League college. You will tackle hundreds of proofs, thousands of theorems, and navigate through math fields like calculus, differential equations, topology, modern analysis, and abstract algebra, solving countless challenging problems along the way. That's me. Hi, my name is Han. I went to Columbia University and I studied math and operations research. Most of my math is actually self-taught for three reasons. First, because of the nature of math, if I lose my attention for one second, I have no idea what the lecture is. Talking about anymore. Two, I am guilty of occasionally skipping the lecture. And three, I have had many math professors who are just too genius to teach. Therefore, I would say that math self-studying is the most important skill I learned after roughly 7,500 hours of studying math. So in this video, I'm going to show you my step-by-step -step process on how to self-study math, and it should be fulfilling, challenging, and fun. So my math learning framework is consists with four parts: definitions, examples. Knowledge gap and exercises. All we need is a book, some paper, and a pen. I have my textbook on my iPad, so if you use an iPad, that's great as well. Choose a book that comes with practice questions with answer keys, and the thorough explanations of the answer key the better. In this video, I will use the chapter on linear equations in the book of differential equation as example. Let's get to it. So the first part is to understand what is this math topic about. What is the definition, or it can be a rule or a theorem. These are the things that the mathematicians discovered or proved a long time ago. You probably need to understand or memorize them. Just open your book, read it, and try to understand as much as possible. So for example, in this chapter, we can just start reading and see the definition of what is a linear equation, and we can highlight it and just keep reading more. If you're confused when you read about the definition. It's totally okay, and don't get intimidated by them. Lots of time, it's more important to know how to use them than what they actually are. This brings us to the second part: examples. Right after the definitions, there are usually a couple of examples to show you how to use the definitions. An analogy I came up with is that a definition, a theorem, or a rule is like a tool. Just like you learn about cups, you not only learn about what the cup is and how it looks or who invented it. More importantly, you learn about the different ways to use it with examples. Like I can use it to drink, like this, and I can use it to water plants, like this. So read the examples for that definition. Work through them and try to understand as much as possible. For example, one, we learn a way to solve a linear equation, and it has a thorough solution for it. So I'm going to read through it and learn how each step works. After we understand how to solve the linear equation in this example one, we can go to the exercise session, and I can immediately see question two is very similar to example one, but just change the number a little. So I'm going to do question two to see if I actually understood the example. You can look at the example of how it's done and copy each step if you want. After you work through each example, you should be able to find a similar question in the exercise session. Do that exercise. Try to get some hands-on experience. To make sure you understand the example, just as with watching someone drink water with a cup, you should try to drinking water with it yourself to make sure you actually know how to do it. Part three is not something I do every time, which is filling knowledge gaps. So when you read the definitions or work through the examples, if you don't understand something, you can look it up. For example, if I don't remember what the integrating factor is when I'm reading this example one, I would just Google what the integrating factor is. Or if I didn't understand how this step become this, I would just search why the integral of negative three dx equals to negative three x and It will show me an answer, so I can move on and try to read the next step. When you search, be as specific as possible. What I found is there are lots of information on that, and it can be overwhelming. If you have a very specific thing to look at, it's usually very helpful. Notice that I will only do this so I can understand the definitions or the examples. I will not go too deep to start and learn that thing we just searched instead. And I'm just trying to avoid going online as much as possible if I can understand the definitions or examples without knowing a specific thing because it's. 
going to be super distracting with the electronic devices. For example, here, if I don't remember what exactly a separation of variables is, but it doesn't really affect me to understand the following solutions because it's going to show me how to use it. So I'm not going to stop and look it up. You can totally mark the thing that you don't understand somewhere and in the future find a dedicated studying session to learn about that topic. We want to stay as focused as possible in this study session and the topic we're learning right now. But if we have to, we gotta do it. And there are lots of learning resources online, but it can be challenging to find reliable and quality learning resources. So I am so excited to share with you the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. I took Ali Abdel's Final Cut Pro editing course on Skillshare about two years ago, and I'm still using that skill today to edit all my videos on this YouTube channel. So if you're like me, a bit of a nerd who just loves to learn new things and invest in self-growth, I highly recommend Skillshare. Skillshare is this wonderful learning platform where you can learn pretty much anything creative. It has thousands of classes in film, illustration, design, painting, you name it. It also offers courses in computer science, programming and math if you're a STEM girly like me. If you're a student and want to study more effectively for your exams, I highly recommend checking out NJ to J's class on studying and Ali Abdel's learning path on productivity. Learning paths are such a cool way to learn because they guide you with multiple classes on the same topic so you can advance from complete beginner to pro. First, the 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. So take the classes you want for free and Thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. Now, go back. After you understand and work through all the examples, it's time to do some practice questions or exercises. I would recommend doing somewhere between 10 to 20 questions for each topic. Remember earlier I said you can look at the examples when you work on the exercise question that's similar to the example. This time, try to do everything on your own independently. Some of the questions are similar to the example and some of them probably are not or they're even harder. It's completely okay. The most important thing I would say is to check the answer keys after you work on the question. It doesn't matter if you got an answer or if it's too hard so you're stuck or you don't know how to do it, but as long as you give it a good thought and make an effort to work on the question, make sure you check the answer and try to understand how it got every step right. Try to learn from the answer keys and see where are the things you're missing. Otherwise, your effort really just goes to waste and you don't understand anything without knowing the correct way to do it. And practicing questions and learning the correct answers should take the majority of your time in the studying session because math is really about exercising your brain and actually applying all the definitions or theorems to solve problems. I would say for one hour studying session, I would spend 30 minutes working on practice questions, 20 minutes on learning and working through the examples, and 10 minutes learning about the definitions or filling the knowledge gap. Sometimes if you have more things you don't understand or you need to look it up, it's completely okay just to make sure you are not just reading and passively learning. Make sure to practice a bunch. I want to talk a little bit more about memorization at the end. So by practicing a lot of questions, you should probably be able to memorize the definitions or the theorem because you use them in each question and that repetition is going to be very helpful. But if you have a lot to memorize, I recommend to write all those formulas or theorems that you need to remember on the formula sheet or a cheat sheet and just use that sheet while you're practicing and have a dedicated time to try to write them on paper on your own without looking them up. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video is helpful. If you tried this self-studying method, leave a comment and tell me how it goes. I read all my comments and hope you had a wonderful day. Like and subscribe. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.